The disk diffusion test is a simple assay for determining the antimicrobial susceptibility of a bacteria. I've previously put together a video showing the process of performing this test, and I'll put a link up here. But in today's video, what I want to show you is what happens when the test is done incorrectly to really highlight the importance of standardization. As part of this video, I've put together a concise uh, visual guide for how to perform the disk diffusion test. You can download a PDF copy of this guide uh, from the link in the video description below. Method standardization is key to getting accurate results. Here we've done a few experiments to demonstrate the importance of standardization. The factors that we're going to be examining are pure culture as opposed to a mixed culture, the thickness of the agar that we use for our disk diffusion testing, as well as the composition of the media and the need to use the standard Mueller Hinton agar. On the left, what we have is a disk diffusion test done with a mixed culture of both E. coli and Staph aureus. In the center, we have only Staph aureus. And then on the right, we have a pure culture of E. coli. What I think you can appreciate is that in the mixed culture, we get a result that is reflective of neither of our two cultures individually. It's critical to always use only pure cultures. On these three nutrient agar plates, you can see colonies of Staph aureus and E. coli on the left, E. coli on its own in the center, and Staph aureus on its own in the on the right. What I hope you can appreciate here is that the colony morphologies are not distinct enough to readily differentiate them from each other on the mixed plate. This really highlights the importance of using a media where different bacterial species can be readily differentiated, like blood agar. In these three plates, what you can see is a ciprofloxacin disc test done on E. coli. On the left, center, and right, we have agar with different depths. On the far left, we have our thickest media with our narrowest inhibitory zone, indicating that the drug is diffusing more down than out. In the center, we have our uh, reference conditions where the mueller hinton agar is four millimeters thick. And then on the right, we have thin agar where the ciprofloxacin can diffuse out further. And I think you can appreciate that from our thin agar, where we have a zone diameter of 48 millimeters, to 44 with our reference condition, all the way down to 34 with our thick agar, um, the thickness of the product does have a true impact on uh, the result that we have. On these three plates, you can see the results of our test of an E. coli on Mueller-Hinton agar on the left, this is our standard condition, BHI agar in the center, as well as nutrient agar on the right. I think you can appreciate that we have differences in zone diameters, particularly between the nutrient agar and the Mueller-Hinton. Interpretation of these results relies on using the Mueller-Hinton agar. So you can appreciate that for our ampicillin disc, where we have an 18 millimeter inhibitory zone on Mueller-Hinton, we have a 26 millimeter inhibitory zone on uh, nutrient agar, and this could result in an in inaccurate classification of the isolate as susceptible in this case, as compared to the true state of resistant. After having watched this video, I hope you have a better appreciation of the importance of test standardization. Don't forget to download a copy of the visual guide for Kirby Bauer testing from the link in the description below. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments.